Good evening. Please stand as you are able and turn to page four in your booklets. Come and see the time is here. Now is the day of salvation. Turn to us, O oh saving God. Let your light shine in the darkness. Come abide among us now. Bring to God's mercy, grace, and peace be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. As tender as parent to child, O God, so gentle are you to the poor. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is your love for the world. As far as east is from the west, so far you remove our sin. Remember how we are made, O God. Remember we are dust. Heal our lives, renew our strength, and crown us with your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
The reading tonight is from Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 through 7 and 15 through 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. reading from Mark. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan! For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Imagine that you're six years old. Your parents burst into your room with a big surprise. You're all going to Disney World. You're so excited. You can't wait. You ask, when can we go? When, 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 when? Mom has only a one-word answer for you. Soon. Soon? Well, that could mean tomorrow. So you begin to pack. You're deciding which pair of Mickey Mouse ears you should take, but in the back of your mind, you're a little troubled, a little worried. So you go to Dad and ask, So, uh, Dad, when are we going to Disney World? Dad says the same thing. Soon. Soon like tomorrow? Soon like next month? Just soon, he says. Well, you don't get to see the mouse the next day, or even the next month, or the next year. Periodically, your parents say, we promise you, we are going to Disney World. We're definitely going. But when you ask for specifics, they always reply the same way. Soon. 24 years pass. After bugging your parents about the promised trip for a few years, you got tired of asking. And they, kept, they kept saying, soon, whenever you brought it up. So you chalk it up to a cruel joke. At 18, you move out, you go to college, you get a decent job, you marry, you have a couple of children, 
that on your 30th birthday, your mom calls, honey, she says, it's time to take that trip to Disney World. Mom, stop with the jokes. It wasn't funny then, and it isn't funny now. No joke. We're getting first class tickets for all of you to fly down there. We're staying at the Four Seasons Resort. I've already called your boss and gotten you and your spouse a paid month off. The children's schoolwork is going to be taken care of. They'll be able to make up their schoolwork. It's going to be just fine. Don't bring any money. Don't bring any credit cards. Everything is paid for, okay? The limo arrives at your front door at 7 a.m. See you at the airport. Click. Maybe now you can understand the despair and joy that Abraham and Sarah must have felt. At least something, a little something of it. The first time Abraham hears the promise, he's a relatively spry 75. He's living in Haran in southern modern-day Turkey, when God tells him to pick up stakes and go to Canaan, where God will make him a great nation. By the time we get to chapter 17, a lot happens in those five chapters, from 12 to 17. They go to Egypt in a time of famine where, you know, Abraham thinks it's a good idea to pass off his wife as his sister in order to not get killed by the locals. Um... Then he, he and his nephew Lot separate. Then he goes on a rescue mission to get to uh, get Lot back after he gets taken, uh, kidnapped. And after the successful rescue, he encounters a mysterious figure named Melchizedek who blesses him. The pro- God restates the promise in chapter 15, followed by Abraham immediately fathering a child with Hagar. You know, because. Abraham fathers Ishmael with Sarah's slave Hagar. Not long after that, Sarah drives Hagar and Ishmael away for the first time. This happens twice. So by chapter 17, a lot has happened. It's it's really a tumultuous family. It's kind of dysfunctional, really. There's a a lot of pain, a lot of drama, a lot of betrayal, really. But God does not give up on Abraham. God, rather, is committed to blessing Abraham and his family. This is such a contrast in God from before. Before God chose Abraham, God did a lot of cursing. In Genesis 3, after after the first sin, the ground is cursed. Patriarchy is introduced. Men have to toil in the fields to get food. Women have terrible pain in childbirth. Cain has to wander the earth after killing his brother. And the forces of chaos blot out creation in the flood. Even after God makes a new covenant with Noah, Noah does his own cursing after this bizarre incident with his middle son involving wine and nudity. I'm not making this up. This is in Genesis chapter 9. And then God scatters the people of Babel. So there's all kinds of cursing going on in Genesis 3 to 11. But then when God meets Abraham, God chooses Abraham in chapter 12. It's as if God's relationship with humanity shifts. Instead of cursing and destroying, God shows us that God is a God of blessing. not just to one family. God's going to use one family. One family is going to be the means of salvation, the means of blessing for everyone else, for everyone else. And God chooses a rather unlikely family with Abraham and Sarah. Very human family. Family you wouldn't think would have, wouldn't have much to offer. Paul has a, puts it in a brutal way. He was as good as dead when Isaac was born. But God was determined to make them the means of blessing 
before the world, and that extended to us. Paul put it well when he said we were spiritual children of Abraham and Sarah, grafted onto the family tree of salvation. An unlikely family gives rise to an unlikely an unlikely people of blessing from which comes an unlikely Christ. And it is through him we are ultimately blessed. We've got our trip to Disney World. Amen. Great is love, great is mercy, to choose the path that leads to Calvary, to drink the cup of pain and sorrow. How great is love, how great is love for me, how great is love love of God the Father, to choose a plan that sends his only Son, to live with us, to walk among us. How great his love, how great his love for us. How great his love, how great his love should call us his children, that he should give Jesus how great his love for us, how great his love for us. Often, the first step to change is listening. We have to listen to those we've hurt. We have to listen to creation as she cries. We have to listen to the voice of the oppressed if we ever hope to make things right. So today, as we begin our prayer of confession, we will start with a moment of silence, a moment to listen. And then we will pray together trusting that God is always listening to us and that God's ears listen with love. So let us confess silently and then together. Listening God, take what, what is, is closed, closed in, in us and, and open it. it. Take, take what, what is distracted in us and settle it. Take what is hurting in us and hold it. it. Take any and all parts of us that create distance from you. For we are like Peter, O oh God. We argue what we don't know. We fear what we cannot see. And, and we, we almost, almost always speak sooner than we listen. So open us, settle us, hold us, and forgive us. We long to hear you more clearly. 
we long to know you more fully. With hope we pray, and with gratitude we confess. Amen. Siblings in Christ, we confess with gratitude because we know that God already has heard and forgiven us. No matter what we have done or left undone, we are held in God's hand. So rest in this good news. God, God invites, invites us, us in. God, God meets us where we are. God hears our prayers. God forgives us. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Please open your booklets to page nine. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for everyone in need, here and throughout the world. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over all who sleep. Tend your ailing ones in your love, Lord. Rest your weary ones. In your love, Lord, bless your dying ones. In your love, O Lord of all. Watch, O Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O Lord, with all those who weep. Give your angels and saints charge over. stand as you are able. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, 
and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. of the Lord be with you always and also with you 